Companies, Molino Timber Company. Rancho Soca Augmentation still had thousands of acres of unharvested old-growth redwood trees in the spring of 1910. Yet the Loma Prieta Lumber Company, which owned the land, had spent the better part of the past decade failing to harvest anything other than the most accessible acreage. Conservative in its outlook and methods, the company hesitated when it should have asserted. By 1910, it had abandoned operations in Hinkley Gulch, and its small mill on Mill Creek north of Davenport was quickly running out of usable timber. If the company was to remain viable going forward, it needed help. Assistance came from Alfred Williams, Oscar E. Chase, Albretto Burt Studley, Fred Daubenbiss, and Fred Severance, who on May 31, 1910, joined forces to incorporate the Molino Timber Company. All of the men were employees of the Loma Prieta Lumber Company and retained their positions within the firm. The stated goal of the new company was to harvest difficult-to-access timber on behalf of the Loma Prieta Lumber Company so that the later could eventually plant eucalyptus trees throughout its properties within the augmentation. What the directors lacked in money, they made up for an ambition and vision. Their task was to send crews along Aptos Creek to chop up abandoned and overlooked trees for firewood. This would generate some initial revenue from which they could further invest in equipment. Then, in late 1910, the company was made a subsidiary of the Loma Prieta Lumber Company and given the contract for harvesting the remaining timber in Hinkley Gulch. This narrow, remote tributary of the east branch of Soco Creek had eluded thorough timber harvesting since 1901. The canyon was difficult to access and vulnerable to natural disasters such as flooding, landslides, and earthquakes. On April 18, 1906, several lumbermen and a Chinese cook were killed in a massive landslide triggered by the San Francisco earthquake. The Loma Prieta Lumber Company never recovered from this loss, eventually gave up the gulch and its millions of board feet of timber. But the Molino Timber Company had some ideas that were more risky, and the Loma Prieta Lumber Company was keen to make money. The Molino directors reasoned that the only way to profitably extract the timber was via a railroad. But the Loma Prieta branch of the Southern Pacific Railroad had recently been cut back to the old village of Loma Prieta, far south of where any line to Hinkley Gulch would need to be located. Meanwhile, a route up Bridge Creek could potentially get to Hinkley Gulch, but at too high of an elevation to be useful. The conclusion the directors of the company came to was that any useful railroad would have to run along China Ridge which was substantially higher in elevation than the current railroad grade. A 30-inch narrow-gauge railroad was the only affordable option and, in any case, would allow trains to make very sharp turns and pass through the very narrow cuts. A switchback, meanwhile, could get the train to the top of the ridge. Unfortunately, over three miles of track would be needed to achieve this goal. In addition, another three miles would be needed to reach Hinkley Gulch and four more miles to reach the heart of the timberland. This was simply not practical. After much debate, the directors finally agreed on building a 2,250-foot-long steam-powered cable incline. It wasn't the first in a county. A similar incline had run at Waterman Switch, north of Boulder Creek, but that operation did not have a railroad running within Waterman Gap. This incline would serve as a midpoint of a timber-cutting network that would operate in two sections, one at the top of China Ridge using a small 10.5-ton Shea locomotive, and one along Aptos Creek, using first a modified gas-powered Maxwell automobile, and later a Scott Hall gasoline rail speeder. The product brought out of Hinkley would not be logs, but rather split stuff, such as railroad cross ties, grape stakes, fence posts, and shingle and shake bolts. This would keep the carloads light and obviate the need for ballast. The split stuff would be hauled to the railroad grade either on pack mules or via high lines, where it would be loaded into waiting wagons. Split stuff was also quick to produce. As a result, the railroad tracks from Loma Prieta to the southern boundary of the augmentation were lined with stacks of split stuff waiting for pickup by Southern Pacific trains. Even before the railroad was completed, the F.A. Heen Company hired the Molino Timber Company to haul out split stuff from its logging operation at the headwaters of Bridge Creek. Stacks of its split stuff were placed side by side with the Molino stacks, with the incline being used to haul both down to the Aptos Creek grade. It was the duty of the lumberjacks to keep straight which piles of split stuff were Molinos and which were Heens. Construction of the line began in spring 1912. Southern Pacific readily agreed to allow a third rail to be added to its tracks between the end of the Loma Prieta branch at the village of Loma Prieta and the former Schillings Camp, today's Porter Picnic area in the Forest of Nicene Mark State Park. For the first time, the private switch at Molino, which had initially split off for the Molino Shingle Mill in 1884 and later for the main Loma Prieta Mill from 1886, 
was upgraded to a formal stop by Southern Pacific. A former county engineer, Arnold Baldwin, was hired to build the line. Around 100 workers were employed that summer, half to build the railroad and the other half to cut split stuff in the forest. The Molino Timber Company's operations eventually had three camps and a waypoint along China Ridge. Camp number one was at the top of the incline and included the massive donkey engine that operated the cable hoist, locomotive storage and repair facilities, homes for the hoist operators and mechanics, sidings for spare and under repair rolling stock, a water tower and wood bunker to resupply the locomotive, a blacksmith shop, and other facilities for a small group of people that lived there. After 1912, no logging took place in the vicinity of Camp No. 1, and it only hosted a small population of workers. In 1913, railroad construction crews reached Sand Point, 3.5 miles beyond Camp No. 1, where Hinkley and China Ridges meet. It was here that the F.A. Heen Company's split stuff from the headwaters of Bridge Creek was hoisted up via high lines to the railroad grade for transfer to the incline and beyond. To support this effort, the location had at least two sidings to allow the lo loading of rolling stock. To reach Sand Point, ten bridges and numerous half bridges were needed to cross all the gullies above Bridge Creek. These were crude structures made of stacks of logs and split stuff and held together with the same. Unlike the Loma Prieta branch, which was built to Southern Pacific standards, this route was a remote logging railroad, and the Molino Timber Company cut costs wherever possible. The one-mile route from Sand Point to Camp Number 2 was even more rugged, crossing over several deep gullies via six more bridges. It was at Camp Number 2, reached in late 1913, that the majority of the workers lived in crudely built shacks atop the adjacent hill. The place had the unfortunate moniker of Jap Camp due to the high number of Japanese lumbermen who worked here during this high season. The camp had many worker cabins and a dormitory, a cookhouse, and small amenities to keep the men occupied in the evenings. Around 70 workers lived in the forest during the harvest season, with some chopping trees, some stripping them, others cutting them and preparing them for transport. At the end of the day, most returned to camp number two, except for the most hardy cruisers who ranged deep into the forest to identify potentially profitable groves. The railroad built two spurs at the camp to park rolling stock. A switchback to the top of the ridge was also built to more easily access timber near the summit. The majority of the Molino Timber Company's logging operations were centered at camp number two, Work crews took pack mules down into the gullies of Hinkley Gulch each day and returned in the evenings. Most split stuff was cut on site and brought up to the railroad grade either by mule or via high lines that were suspended across the entire gulch, which spanned a mile from ridge to ridge. Larger logs were also sometimes hauled to the camp, where they were processed on site rather than in the gulch due to poor terrain for cutting. Most peacemakers, split stuff cutters, worked by themselves or in tandem and the Japanese workers in particular did not like working with each other. The railroad would make two to three runs on most days, hauling four to six cars per run. The system worked from late 1913 through mid-1916, when most of the available timber around Camp Number 2 was exhausted. Beginning in late 1915, the railroad line was extended deeper into the forest towards the headwaters of Hinkley Gulch, but it did not reach Camp Number 3 until mid-1916. Part of the reason for the slow progress was the extreme terrain, which involved deep gullies, narrow cuts, and near vertical drops. Another 16 bridges and six deep cuts into the hillside were required to reach Camp Number 3, only two miles away from Camp Number 2. Once the camp was reached and the area prepared, Camp Number 2 shut down and the buildings and machinery were moved north. The large Highland Donkey engine was also relocated to the camp and work resumed. In spring 1917, disaster struck the company when the mile-long high line snapped and all attempts at repairing it or replacing it with the other lines failed to achieve profitable results. After nearly shutting down the operation permanently, management decided to extend the railroad further to the top of Hinkley Creek. However, it is unclear whether this decision was made by the directors or Timothy Hopkins, president of the Loma Prieta Lumber Company. To reach the new area, the railroad switched back twice before finally crossing the creek, where it terminated in two forks on the west bank. The landing here allowed cars to be loaded directly from nearby mule tracks, which reduced crews' reliance on high lines and donkey engines. At the end of the 1917 season, all logging at the headwaters of Hinkley Creek ceased. It was a sudden decision sent by Hopkins after the workers had mostly left for the year. Although there was still usable timber in the area, it was deemed too difficult to extract and unlikely to generate sufficient profit. By the late autumn, 
Hopkins had sent in crews to remove most of the tracks beyond Camp Number 2 in order to use them on a new route the Loma Prieta Lumber Company was building along Bridge Creek. The track that remained continued to be used to remove split stuff from the headwaters of Bridge Creek. It also supported a small group of peace workers that returned in spring 1918 to harvest the remaining timber on the slopes of Santa Rosalia Ridge, just to the north of Camp Number 2. A disastrous storm in September 1918 severely damaged parts of the new track on Bridge Creek, as well as the Molino Timber Company's grade and the tracks at the headwaters of Bridge Creek. The former F.A. Heen Company's saddleback locomotive, Betsy Jane, was lost in the mayhem. As a result of the storm, the Loma Prieta Lumber Company salvaged what they could from what was available. The tracks along the ridge were pulled to replace the damaged tracks along the lower portion of Bridge Creek. In spring 1919, the Molino's Shea locomotive and the remaining rolling stock on the ridge were hauled down the incline. Crews then dismantled the remaining track and the incline. Lastly, the massive donkey engine that had run the cable hoist for the past seven years was lowered down to Aptos Creek. On December 1st, 1919, the Molino Timber Company was voluntarily dissolved by its directors and all of its remaining assets were transferred to the Loma Prieta Lumber Company. The legacy of the Molino Timber Company's route along China Ridge survives today in the form of the Aptos Creek Fire Road in the forest of Nicene Mark State Park. After reaching the top of the switchback, hikers and bikers arrive at the site of Camp Number 1 at the top of the incline. Continuing down the road, they follow the railroad right-of-way, except where it originally deviated over bridges and half-trestles, remains of which can sometimes be found at the bottom of gullies. The Sandpoint Overlook marks the start of the Hinkley Basin Fire Road, which once provided logging crews access to the headwaters of Bridge Creek. Continuing on along the main road, the railroad grade eventually veers off to the west, while the road continues its climb north up the ridge. This is the site of Camp Number 2, and marks where the railroad first entered Hinkley Gulch. Because of the temporary nature of the camp, nothing survives today except the vague trace of a railroad grade disappearing into the forest.